And let me move to the second speaker, and um, uh, we will do, as I told you, a little bit of change of schedule, and we'll ask Dr. Dieter Brüring. Uh, Professor Dieter Brüring is a German, uh, very, uh, in, his, in his no introduction, and uh, have uh, uh, been working in Germany for a long time, and now he's uh, uh, chairing uh, the organ transplant uh, uh, practice in King Faisal, specialized hospital in uh, Saudi Arabia. He's a close friend and uh, we're happy to listen to him about uh, liver transplantation for HCC, the Scott or the Saudi Center for Organ Transplant uh, outcome. Uh, and I think you're going to speak for the whole of outcome in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Dieter. Thank you so much for this kind invitation and introduction, Mahmoud. And uh, I would like to thank the whole organizing committee for inviting me and organizing this beautiful conference and important conference because this HCC, it's a burning question here uh, in the Middle East and also, of course also in Saudi Arabia. And as Mahmoud already mentioned, the Saudi Arabia is also investing in uh, transplant centers, uh, especially the King Faisal Specialist Hospital and there is a huge demand for transplantation, liver transplantation, kidney transplantation, uh, and uh, the numbers of uh, liver transplants and overall transplants are increasing also in Saudi Arabia. This is a development in the King Faisal and Riyadh, so in the last years we were able really to uh, stimulate the transplant. Saudi Arabia is not as active as uh, Egypt. Of course, Egypt has, has much more uh, larger transplant centers than Saudi Arabia, but the population is 20 million but the uh, transplant field in Saudi Arabia is still underdeveloped with only three liver transplant uh, centers. Our center is supplying liver transplant for adult patients, uh, but also the disease donor liver transplantation is, uh, uh, is uh, established. And, but here the numbers are totally mixed up. So this is here, you cannot see it easily. For example, the, disease, the number of diseased liver transplants is around uh, 20 uh, per year, and the overall number of diseased uh, liver transplants is around 50 in the whole country. So there is a, a developed diseased organ uh, transplant system and also a split liver transplant. But as in Egypt, most of the recipients, they depend on living donation uh, for pediatrics or adult uh, recipients. So here the activity, our center is doing uh, 44 pediatric liver transplants and 71 adult liver transplants. As you already know that uh, hepatocellular carcinoma is very common uh, worldwide and especially in this region. And it's the most common observed cancer in Sub-Saharan uh, Africa and South uh, East Asia. It's very fast growing, as we already saw, and the age-adjusted rate in HEC is increasing from 1.3 to more than 5, the most, fifth, uh, most common cancer. Saudi Arabia the, uh, has an incidence of uh, HCC not as high as in Egypt, but we have in Saudi Arabia still problems about reporting. Uh, the incidence is higher, as re this is from the World Health, uh, from the, uh, World Health Organization, the data, but I think uh, in reality also the incidence in Saudi Arabia is higher as shown in the International Registry because of under-reporting uh, and under-detection of uh, the cases. As you know, the, uh, what kind of modalities uh, we have from the surgical perspective, unfortunately we, sur we surgeons are the only one who can offer uh, curative uh, solutions. All other uh, modalities are unfortunately uh, palliative or with a high recurrence rate. So therefore liver resection and liver transplantation. And as you know, the uh, liver transplantation offers the best long-term effective treatment for patients with HCC compared to all other uh, modalities. Uh, the initial results when the, we started it more than uh, 30 years ago to apply uh, liver transplant for HCC were not so good. 
but by the, the uh, five year survival rate was very poor in the beginning and discouraging, discouraging and therefore a lot of centers stopped doing uh, transplants for HSC. But once, and this is, was really the breakthrough, we learned clear, clear selection criteria, then the outcome was uh, much better. And this is really was a milestone paper from Mazzaferro, as you all know. And most of the centers are now applying the strict criteria. Uh, this criteria could be reduced by other centers, and uh, they were sometimes uh, enlarged and expanded uh, from, with uh, small modifications about the number. But with the main problem is the staging, the accuracy of the diagnostic images, because we are working only with morphological uh, criteria at this moment, with size and numbers. And you all know this uh, HSC Metro ticket, which uh, is taking into account the number of nodules and the size of the different tumors. Uh, and this is in relation to the expected five-year survival. Uh, every main center in the world tries to establish their own criteria, come up with some modification, but at the end the basic principle is the same, working with number of lesions and with the size. And this is under questions today and uh, there are now uh, centers, they go ahead, they move ahead from this uh, or move away from this uh, uh, just morphological description and I will show you the justification also in Saudi Arabia why we are doing it. So we did an analysis of the uh, transplanted patient with HCC in our center, by far the biggest uh, liver transplant center in Saudi Arabia between uh, 2001 and 2013. We uh, analyzed the cases uh, and uh, the liver transplant was either done as a primary treatment or followed uh, with modalities for bridging the patient. If we could not apply living donation, we did uh, bridging with local regional treatment of different kind. And uh, in this study, only cases with pathological uh, proven and uh, only HSC lesions were included in this study. We excluded some mixed tumors and some. we have also some cases with CCC and HCC in one patient. Uh, all these patients were excluded in this analysis. Uh, and the tumor characteristics were all based on the explant uh, pathology. Um, we correlated the outcome of our patients in terms of recurrence and overall survival with the tumor size, the number of uh, lesions, uh, then to other various transplant criteria, tumor differentiation, vascular invasion, and so on. 80% of our patients were male. In, uh, of the recipients uh, transplanted with an HCC and only 18% female. Uh, and 88 cases uh, were performed in the study period and uh, proven to be an HCC. The patient age was in median 55 years, the range from 42 uh, to 70. The 70 is our upper cutoff, with the regular cutoff we are applying for recipient acceptance. And the follow-up time was the mean in mean 35 months uh, with a range of 8 to 125 months. This is the uh, distribution of our recipients who were fulfilling the Milan criteria, 68%. And in the beginning of the program, the Milan criteria were more strictly applied and in the last years we uh, were accepting more patients within uh, UCSF criteria, so we ex extended the in criteria and also uh, in some uh, selected patients outside uh, Milan criteria, well, and also outside the San Francisco criteria. The lesion size varied between uh, 0 0.5 and 11 centimeter on the final pathology uh, with a mean lesion size of 2.7 uh, centimeter, a number of lesions up to uh, five lesions. And this is the differentiation in the pathology. So the majority were uh, G2, so moderately differentiated with 57% and 24% well differentiated uh, tumors. And 8% uh, were poorly differentiated. Then the vascular invasion on the pathology report, 
uh, we found in 9% vascular invasion, microscopic or microscopic vascular invasion, and uh, in 80% uh, there was no vascular invasion proven, but there was, as, as you know, with the uh, bridging and the uh, local, local regional therapy, we are ending up with a significant number of patients where we don't find any viable uh, tumor in the explanted liver, so therefore it's not easy to uh, judge on this pathology. The overall uh, patient survival of this patient uh, population uh, transplanted for HCC uh, after one year, three years, and five years, after uh, one year, 88%, three years, 74%, which remained then constant as overall uh, patient survival. If you look at the disease-free survival, it's better. So um, the disease-free survival after one year is 95%, and after three years, and it stays after five years, 87%, uh, despite this expanding uh, slowly the criteria towards San Francisco and even uh, further. We did a statistical analysis uh, about the prognostic factors and uh, in terms of HSC recurrence post-transplantation, and this was related significantly to vascular invasion. This is nothing new, but also now proven in a, a Saudi population and uh, with a poor differentiation of HSC lesion. And it was not related, our outcome was not related to Milan criteria or UCSF criteria, and, or even being outside the criteria, so the prognostic factors were the differentiation and the vascular invasion. So therefore, uh, the overall results of liver transplantation for HCC at our institution uh, showing excellent outcome, which uh, really is uh, motivating us to move uh, forward and go ahead with our strategy. Uh, as known and also now shown in our uh, environment, in our genetic environment and uh, in the Saudi population, that's a tumor poor differentiation and the presence of vascular invasion is, the, is correlating with high incidence of post-transplant HCC recurrence. Um, the, that we are now able to expand our criteria and we are going more and more in the direction of uh, observation, keeping in a proper observation time, minimum three months if possible, and then uh, applying the policy that there is no, there are no signs of vascular invasion, and uh, in borderline cases we are applying more liberal a, a biopsy. We are waiting for our oncologists to come up with biological tumor criteria um, to have a better idea about the aggressivity of uh, the HSC for the indication of transplantation, that we can predict better the outcome. This is our transplant team at King Faisal. And this is our new oncology center, which uh, will open this year, at the end of this year, oncology and liver uh, center, where we can really work then closer with our oncologist uh, on this really multiple patients with HCC in Riyadh. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dieter, for the very nice talk. and. Uh, is this very nice building at the end, your surgeon would have place for it, or it would be for the medical oncology only? Very nice building, you no, showed no. us on the last slide. Not the surgeon. <laughs> Not for surgeons, that's what. Well, because, enough space for surgeons. <laughs> because uh, Dieter is leaving, so if there is any question, we have uh, time for one or two rapid questions. Yes, go ahead. So my question was regarding the utility of the PET scan before transplant. Uh, in our um, paper and also others showed it correlates with poor, uh, poor uh, differentiation of the tumor, microvascular invasion and so on, um, but still all prelims, small data are emerging about PET before transplant and the correlation with outcome and recurrence. Did you guys use it or uh, planning to? No, we are now doing uh, PET scan in every uh, HCC recipient since one and a half year. We started to do it, uh, but at this moment we don't take uh, uh, into account the uptake within the liver. 
we only take into account if there is any uptake outside the liver. But uh, for the detailed analysis, what does it mean, the uptake uh, in the, within the liver, in terms of differentiation and vascular invasion, we did not analyze now. Maybe in, we have to collect more, uh, high, bigger sample size, and then in the future we can also maybe add something to the uh, literature. But from my impression, first impression, I cannot see a value within the liver. But we will see. Uh, Again, in the same theme of bi biological behavior, because we are all concerned about this, of course, uh, you showed us, uh, which is very orthodox, that uh, uh, the uh, important prognostic factors were the vascular invasion and the degree of differentiation, which all of us would agree. But did you look for the alpha fetoprotein, or at least the trend of the alpha fetoprotein level as a reflection of all the biology as an important prognostic factor? Did it uh, play any role in that? No. And the, the second thing, first the alpha fetoprotein, the second thing is the progression or not for those who have received a pre-transplant taste or whatever type of treatment. Did again, is it, uh, was it in your statistical workup an important prognostic factor or not? Because most studies would say yes. Yeah, in this analysis, it was not a prognostic factor. But of course, this is selection bias because the patient was rapidly in, um, Increasing alpha fetoprotein and, and uh, half extreme high, high alpha fetoprotein level of more than 1,000 were not transplanted. So this, uh, therefore, it's a selection bias. It came out to be not uh, significant, but more due to the selection. Thank you.